This video is going to be about what quirks are and the theories behind quirk management. There will be a separate video going over what actual each individual quirk does. However, I still believe this video is very helpful because we'll go over, as I said, theories of when to lock in and when to cancel negative quirks and exactly how you get them, the percentage chances, and all of that for them. It's important to understand what quirks are and how you get them. There's a variety of ways you can get quirks and we're going to kind of gloss over all of them because if we went into the specifics of each one we'd be here a while because certain positive quirks are always activated from a certain item. Others are a percent chance if you activate a curio without using the proper item where it's always just a percent chance some items work that way. There are two types of quirk, obviously the positive, which are usually yellow, and negative, which are usually red. The positive usually don't have any drawbacks, such as you gain like 25% damage against something but lose this. That's almost always the negative quirks, and we'll talk about that. Really, there's only one quirk, we'll kind of talk about in the middle, rabies, that you can debatably say is positive, but we'll talk about that as I said. So, it's important to understand how we get negative quirks outside of what I just said from activating curios. After you finish a mission, it, there's a calculation. This is where you'll probably get about 80 to 90% of your negative quirks. If you ever wonder why it's important to finish a mission, not only do you obviously get a possible trinket, the heirlooms, and money, and obviously resolve. I mean, those are four huge reasons right there. It actually affects the way in which you get negative and positive quirks. So not only if you don't finish a dungeon, you're losing out of money, heirlooms, all that jazz, you also begin to increase your negative quirk chance which is very interesting. So the first numbers we're going to go through here right here is quest objective not completed. Chance of a positive quirk is 35% minus 0.15 times your stress. So if you walk out with 100 stress, obviously that's going to be 15%. Thus, you only have a 20% uh, chance to get a, a positive quirk. Now for a negative quirk, we're taking 40%, we're almost halfway already, but then we get a 0.26 times stress, and you can only ever have 100 stress as you're leaving, so if someone leaving with like 180, it's always gonna come down to 100. Whatever they come back to town with is what the game will calculate your quirk chance on. But once again, that's 40% times 0.26, so you could possibly be up to a 66% chance to get a negative quirk. That is brutal. That's pretty much at least guaranteed three-fourths of your party will be looking around a negative quirk if you do back out with obviously three individuals at 100. But even if you back out around 50, that is still about a 50% chance. And you that, that's still huge. That's still at least two negative quirks. And if you're unlucky, easily, easily could be three negative quirks. Lost all that money, and now they're going to spend time in the sanitarium, or you're going to get very lucky in your cove runs or other runs and reducing negative quirks, which we will talk about. Now what I don't like exactly is that when you complete a quest objective, you only have a 45% chance for a positive quirk. I don't really like that because it's not even 50%, so I feel like you're not really getting rewarded too much for finishing dungeon. What I will say about that though is, it does stop a lot of quirks from constantly rotating out, so it does allow you to run dungeon with a hero with a lot of quirks you do like, because you can only lock in three quirks, so you're going to have to pick your top three, thus the other two are probably going to be forever changing most likely. And then a chance of negative quirk is still pretty high though. It's 25% times 0.25 stress. So practically it's just going to be a 15% swing. But even if you're a hero, you do finish it right at the end. You get out the 100 stress. You still have a 50% chance of a negative quirk to only a 45% chance of a positive. And that's where I kind of have an issue. I feel like the chance of a negative quirk if you finish should really be about 10% then plus 25 at the maximum. So there are five curios in the game that will just remove a negative quirk for you. And I think the most consistent one out of this is the Eerie Coral in the Cove. However, we'll talk about the, all five options. Eldritch Altars are the tentacle-shaped statue. If I can't find one in my gameplay, they are semi-rare. I've gone through a lot of dungeons recently and I haven't seen one. But they're the little tentacle-shaped altar. You pop a holy water in it, boom, negative quirk gone. They appear in all four major regions. Piles of scrolls can be found in the warrens. If you pop those with a torch, they do remove a negative cork as well. And as I said, Eerie Coral, I seem to have the best luck with. Now, I do run a cove a lot, so obviously it may be I just run it so much that eventually, uh, statistically, I get more. 
However, I feel like there's an abundance of Yuri Coral in there. All they take is a medicinal herb, which is great because you're already bringing in a lot of medicinal herbs for the curios there to remove negative debuffs and all that. So you're always going to have medicinal herbs. You may not always have a holy water in a place where you feel like you don't need one. For the scrolls, you're probably always going to have a torch unless you're going torchless. But even if you are, just bring along maybe one and two just in case because removing a locked in negative quirk at champion level can save you 4,500 gold with a maxed out sanitarium. The confession booth is found in the ruins. Now this is just a 25% chance to activate with no items, so you are rolling on a quarter chance. And the confession booth has its own interactions. Check out the wiki on the other ones, but there is always a possibility in the ruins of finding one of these. But it's not 100% chance like the Eerie Coral, Piles of Scrolls, and the Eldritch Altars, but it is a possibility if you're in a pinch. And then the finally the last one is the Sacrificial Stone. Once again, 25% chance to remove a negative quirk, and obviously that has a slew of other 75% stuff. So it's worth checking out the Confession Booth and Sacrificial Stone so you understand the negatives if you do decide to gamble on that option, because it is a quarter chance you're not getting 100% guaranteed. For this next part, we're going to talk about the theory of quirk management now, both positive and negative. This is going to be very long, so I'm not going to name, I'm not going to go down the list exactly. I'm going to do that in my other video about what they do, how you get them, and kind of where they maybe sit in your party. This is going to be more about when do you want to keep certain ones and when do you want to get rid of certain ones. And the next video will go in depth about each individual quirk. It'll be a long video. This one's meant to be a little shorter, so you can get an idea of how to manage your quirks, the theories behind it, and if you're intrigued by it, to continue on to the next video to learn about every single quirk you can possibly encounter with DLC. So before we get into the quirk management, we have to talk about that lower resolve heroes are cheaper, which means it's cheaper to remove locked in quirks, uh, non-locked in quirks, to lock in quirks, the positive quirks we want to lock in are cheaper. Therefore, if we begin to pick up really strong positive quirks, it's better to lock them in early. And that really depends up to you what you count as strong. It's going to be different from hero to hero. For example, if we take the Eldritch Hater or even Slayer, one of those two, and you have like a nice Highwayman, Leper, Crusader, whoever have you, you know, do massive damage, and then you have a Vestal, do you really want to lock in an Eldritch Hater or an Eldritch Slayer? On a Vestal? Probably not. You may consider Unholy if you'd like a second position Vestal. However, for the most part, we probably want to leave those alone in the Vestal. We don't want to focus on getting rid of it, because if she only has 3-4 to four quirks, you might as well keep it just in case you do have to do damage versus Eldritch. And also, the minus 15% against Eldritch can be beneficial if you go to the Cove a lot. If the quirk matches early on, make sure you lock it in, because it's relatively inexpensive, and if you're doing fairly well at the time, it's much cheaper to lock in really good quirks. Other ones are damage percent quirks, as I just said, against types of classes or just general, such as Warrior of Light, is 10% damage above a torch of 75%. So that's just a straight up 10% damage for just having the torch above 75%. It's really strong, excellent to lock in early, it'll pay off so much in the late game. So, as I said, it's better to lock in early, it's also better to remove negative quirks early on as well. Now, we're not just removing any old quirk, we are going to be removing the most debilitating ones. I'm going to talk about which ones there are, some in specific and some in general, based on what they are. And then the other ones, you can actually let them lock in and usually won't cause too much of an issue for you. We're going to talk about rabies right now, though, just to get out of the way, because that is debatably one of the ones you could actually use for your benefit if it's on a high accuracy hero or you have a way to increase accuracy a lot. So the great debate is, is the damage worth the minus 10 accuracy? And that really depends when you want to do it. I believe the minus 10 accuracy is very detrimental at champion level, and it's not as crippling in the early game. Because the amount of dodge that begins to increase, not only can you get up to the 30s, and then if you minus 10 accuracy, essentially giving individuals almost 46 dodge in a way. If you have like an accuracy of 100 or 105, you have a 50% chance of hitting now, which is not ideal. And that little bit of extra damage you're going to get is probably not going to help you too much because A, you're probably going to be missing, obviously, half the time, and B, the X percentage of damage probably won't tick someone over. It's just an extra cheap way to get some extra damage in the early game where enemies' dodges can literally be 0 to like 10, so it's not that bad at all. But you do have to be careful with rabies on who it's on, because obviously if you get it on someone like the Leper, they are now almost completely useless, but on a higher individual such as a Musketeer or an Arbalist, where their accuracies are rather naturally high, but their damage is a little lower, this can actually offset their damage a little bit, and still not lose enough accuracy that they're missing the whole time. Therefore, rabies is a very situational thing. You can also cancel it with trinkets if you want, and keep that extra damage. It's up to you. 
I usually try to remove it after a little bit, but it's definitely not on my priority if there's other quirks we're about to talk about. Another quirk like Rabies is a uh, Risk Taker. Once again, this is Colors of Madness DLC, but if you do have it, it's 10% damage for minus 10 dodge. It's kind of like Rabies, but now you're going to get hit more, which is fine, because if you put this on an individual who's really tanky and has low speed already, who really gives a crap. So Risk Taker can also be another in a way, a pseudo-neutral quirk, if not maybe positive, depending on the situation. A safe route when you're trying to get rid of quirks is to go from combat to loot to stress management facilities. Now, the only one I will say that trumps combat is Kleptomaniac. And the only reason why I say Kleptomaniac is actually the probably one of the biggest ones you want to do is they just take Offsleet everything. It's a 35% chance and they just take it. And the reason why the other ones where they interact with curios and stuff isn't terrible, it can be bad, don't get me wrong, no negative quirk is really great. However, if you if they at least activate a curio, you can still take the money. You just might get, you know, obviously certain things you can get like 2.5 times the loot if you use an item and you'll only get one times the loot if you don't. However, you're still getting the loot. Kleptomaniac, it's gone. Remove Kleptomaniac, probably above all other damage. Because if you're not getting money, and if you're not getting curios, obviously you're not going to be able to upgrade your other facilities, so it doesn't really matter. So Kleptomaniac is almost always probably one of the top tier ones that have to go. Another one I like to get rid of almost right away is the ability Perfectionist. It's plus 5 stress when you miss an attack. Well, in the early game and champion level, you're going to be missing a lot of attacks. I mean, if you have a... I'm just always picking the Leopard, lowest accuracy, but just as an example, as always like 75 accuracy, you're going to miss a quarter of the time if they have zero dodge. So you're just tacking on extra stress, and that's if they don't have trinkets that increase their stress damage, if the light left. I mean, there's so many things that can make perfectionists just keep on adding extra stress, and you can't really afford to keep on adding possibly 10 to 20 stress from just misses alone, along with getting hit by obviously stress-based abilities. It's just not worth it. Another one I like to get near the top is imposter syndrome. It's a 4% chance just to pass your turn. That's it. Now, it's so low. It's 1 in 25, essentially, but you don't know when it's going to come, and you don't know how detrimental it's going to be to you. So you really need to just make sure that imposter syndrome is gone. However, we'll talk about some of the other ones I rank fairly high as well. Imposter syndrome can wait because it's not the most brutal, but I probably wouldn't let it lock in because that's a lot of money you'd have to pay off then. As we're keeping track here, we're going to go through our combat ones, and our curio and then town event ones. Now I'm only gonna name a couple of more categories. So anything that reduces speed or dodge, depending on the character, that can be brutal. Such as clumsy is just a minus five dodge. It's not the end of the world, but is rather painful. Anything that reduces crit, I get pretty weary of. Speed's a big one, depending on who it is. So anything that reduces speed, such as nocturnal, minus two speed of torches above 75, I usually try to get rid of that because speed is so crucial. I usually try to get rid of them. The fear of blind creatures, such as fear of beasts, fear of unholy, fear of eldritch, yada yada yada, fear of mankind. These ones you have to just think about and say, where am I going? Can I avoid this for a little bit? Because these aren't always the most detrimental. Fear of beasts? Okay, let's just not touch the worms. Maybe you're my cove and ruins runner. Fear of mankind is kind of a bad one because obviously humans are in every single dungeon, so you may want to get rid of fear of mankind above the other three fears. Because as I said, you can dodge Unholy for the most part, you can dodge Beast for the most part, and you can also dodge Eldritch for the most part. So really, that shouldn't affect you too, too much. This also goes the same for the Phobes, such as the Ruins Phobe, Warns Phobe, Co Phobe, you know, all that stuff that increases your stress by 20%. Once again, just maybe you shouldn't take them to those specific areas. You can pretty much avoid those entirely, so they're not the worst in regards to that. Now, the Quirk Nervous, you probably are going to want to get rid of because it is just a flat-out 10%, and that's not exactly something that you can obviously avoid. It just always follows you. So regarding the stress-increasing stuff, you're going to want to get rid of that. Another one is Fangophobia. 20% stress if the torch is above 75. Most likely, you're probably going to have the torch above 75 most of the time. Therefore, you really want to get rid of that right away. And then obviously we have light sensitivity, we're light sensitive, where you get minus 10% damage if the torch is above 75. As I said before, most likely you're always going to have the torch above 75. Usually. You may not. If you do, I'd recommend removing it. 
I'm going to quickly finish up on the last two here, and that will, this will kind of conclude the thoughts and ideas of how to manage your quirks. The next video will actually go through, line by line for the most part, about what the quirks are, where they should belong in your party, and all that. But once you get to Curios, I would leave them on over all the other dungeon ones I just said, because obviously your fighting is going to be almost a number one thing here. That's where you're probably going to get a lot of your loot. And the Curio ones are also percent chances, so it's not even like you're guaranteed to activate them, unlike the other negative quirks that will work 100% time if they are in the correct position. And then the town quirks, such as like Skilled Gambler, or obviously Love Interest, where they can only use certain stress facilities, that's really not worth removing in my honest opinion, so I really wouldn't focus too much on removing those. You can kind of work around with that, you can be like, okay, so they can only gamble, Maybe if I have a lot of people who can only gamble, I'm going I'm to invest early and quickly into two spots in the gambler hall. Or if they can only do bar, once again, I'll put like two to three spots into the bar very quickly. You can get around that. And also, you can reduce stress any time with like the jester and other curios in the dungeon. So stress isn't the worst thing. And having your heroes only locked into certain stress facilities is not terrible. There's a lot of quirks we didn't talk about in this video, but as I say, it wasn't the major point. The major point was, is we should remove combat quirks first, but probably put Klepto and Perfectionist maybe above combat, just because of the huge negative ramifications they can have, and then work your way down the combat quirks that make sense per person, and area stress increasing quirks that make sense. So, if you don't run a lot of ruins, Ruins Phobe may be okay to keep on your heroes and have that lock in. They'll just be maybe your highwaymen for the cove rather than the ruins. Those are can be more easily avoided, unlike universal quirks. Thank you so much for watching. If you're new to the game, feel free to ask questions about certain quirks and what you should do with them. I'll do my best to respond. If you're a veteran or a champion of this game, please let me know what you think as well. Because I can only bring in one perspective and what's worked for me, but there may be other things of you'll be like, you know what, those two actually aren't as terrible as you said they are, and here's why, and here's how you can avoid them, and that's great. Help build a community, help new players learn more, and honestly, help give me some extra knowledge because I can only tackle this game from so many angles. Thank you so much. Like and subscribe below.